Hello and welcome to Tennessee Valley this morning on this Wednesday morning, Wednesday. very early, 6.30. Uh, good morning to you and thank you for joining us this morning. Joe and Kim Palo with you as we are each and every uh, middle of the week Wednesday. Now we have been doing the Tuesday shows. Um, and we, and but, we did it yesterday. Uh, no, we did. <laughs> Because Matt, 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 Matt they got no let out of that. And house. Sarah. And Sarah. Sarah. Um, yeah. Sarah's good anytime. Sarah can come. Sarah is. She, She's, no she melts her. right in. That's right. Exactly. And but she uh, can't be at the studio, but the boys got well, out. Well, let me tell you, uh, and I know because you were, you were working yesterday, you didn't get a chance to see it. <laughs> uh, Sarah has broken her hand, okay, severely or cut it really bad. She's all cut bandaged or broken. up. broken. Well, it's broken and cut. She did like there was there was like There's tendons and ligaments like cut and ripped oh, and had Adam, to be repaired. What'd she Surgery. Do? What happened? She fell at, when she was at work, and uh, lawsuit. Um, <laughs> she fell when she was Just at saying. work, and 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 severely. I mean, she went. So her mom took her to the hospital, and they had to immediately do surgery and the whole thing. And she's got it all managed up. But she she was here as a trooper yesterday. No, with Matt. Yeah. Matt, yeah. So and Matt, early Matt, in the morning, and she was here. She, she was had a boo-boo, a bad boo-boo. She was here, and uh, just you know, just, just like well, like she you always know, that's does. The female that's for the professional you, you know? in her. That's the female. I mean, you know what I'm saying, you know, and Tolbert and Ryerson could take kick a lesson from that, right? Uh, but they were here, which was <laughs> here, which was thank good. Thank goodness, I'm glad um, for you guys. And uh, so yeah, they both have had uh, uh, new newborns uh, brought into their home. Uh, they didn't <laughs> have children; their, they their did. wives did. Their wives had. They're just brought in. It was like knock on the door. Here's a newborn. Uh, but so what they, are you going to do with it? They've taken. Gonna we're going to raise them. <laughs> Don't plant them too deep. We, um, but they, they, they had a uh, you know a, a new addition. So they're they're at home. They're taking a little hiatus from the show. But they were here for yesterday's show, and they had a great show. So we want to thank them for for being there. Then of course Monday show we had Tracy and Tommy Wright. Right. W right. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, not that to be confused with Tracy and Tommy wrong right. or Wong, <laughs> which is another thing totally. Uh, but. Um, but Tracy and Tommy had a good show as well. So we're and hoping for a good show. So we're hoping for a good I mean, one. Because like, we know tomorrow off. we got Nancy and Brene. They're going to have a good show. Right. And then Rob and Ryan. <laughs> right. uh, but ours has to be good so we can stay keeping right. status quo for I mean, the first of the week. Right. You know Seeing how you're the professional and yeah. all. Professional. The professional. Uh, right. <laughs> huh. So, um, but yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a great week. It's very hot. Very, very hot. But the very. gas prices, I mean, wow. killer. I called I my mom and I said, what are you paying for gas? And theirs is coming down, but nowhere near. Like, I think Tennessee and South Carolina kind of got the, yeah. got the, but got we, it all going on. But yeah, the gas is, the gas prices have come down, which, have, you know. I mean, greatly. And I mean, if you do the whole buy low thing, I mean, I wait until mine gets up to like a dollar, dollar ten. And yeah. then we have a son that we. We steal his car from because he never puts more than five dollars right. worth of gas, no matter how expensive right. it is. But so, yeah, that is, that is that's that's very uh, it's it's exciting. To it see. is exciting. I mean, we just less I mean, than three dollars. It's amazing that you and I. I mean, we're like, ooh, look at that price. Ooh, look at wow, that price. Wow, it's a dollar. And and if you get the 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 discount the card, say a dollar ten off, off, you're looking at like a what a dollar seventy eight or something. Like yeah. That, yeah. What a deal. What a deal. What a deal. Go pump some Fortunately, gas. Fortunately, though, I don't need gas. I have enough gas to get me to Pittsburgh. <laughs> yes, you do. So, uh, On any given day at any given time. Uh, anyway. We'll tip it. Now, we were going to talk about some interesting things that happened in history for today. Unfortunately, <laughs> Kim, our, Kim had the wrong day. She in had the wrong day put in her computer. But we do have one thing to tell you that happened on we this We could tell you what happened on this, this week date, in general. On this date... Um, in 1950, it's the only one I've got. I've only got one to throw out at you, so I'm going to stretch it out. June 27th, 1950. I'll teach you to do your own background stuff, Joe. I know. But look at all the wrong. paper we got for this one thing. <laughs> it's just the wrong guy. Um, anyway, President Harry Truman orders U.S. forces to Korea. How'd that work out for us? <laughs> so it, was, it was the Korean War. I know. So that's I was, what MASH was about. Yes, exactly. Thank you. And uh, that's they another. weren't real happy. No, <laughs> the guys, no, no, no. The, the, the doctors at Mash weren't real happy. They had a good time but, a lot, but but yeah. So that's the only thing we can report <laughs> so, to you because that's the only <laughs> thing listed that's pertinent with today. <laughs> so there is that. I know. So, now, sorry, I'll, I'll try. I'll try. That's I'll quite all right. Here. We start off with one-liners this week. <laughs> Next week we'll have two things, right, three. There you go. 
you know, and then it just moves on and on and on. But let's, let's also tell everyone this. Um, Kim and I, this past Sunday, we did. We celebrated our 34th wedding anniversary. We did. And, and we, we didn't fight or anything. We did. We, we didn't did. fight. We, we, we had nice cards to each other. Got you some nice Flowers beautiful and roses candy, and I know. candy. We did. And, and King got me a blow up boat. <laughs> So I'm got, I've got a flowers and candy you know, for, you know, romantically. She gets me a boat, like, go, take this, boat. blow it up. and Here, she's blowing it up as it's going out the door. Go. Um, oh, but yeah. Those little pinpricks aren't there, I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but so, yeah, but, and it was, it, was, it was a wonderful 34 years so far. It was. So we've got 34 more happy years to go, hopefully. <laughs> I will be, ooh, 52. <laughs> Uh, 34 years from today. Right. Wow. You didn't even make it the first 34. Some time you. or another. You're messing up on your math. I know. I was negative. I was born. I was yeah, negatively I born yeah. prior to uh, all of it. All right. So, yeah, it. but happy anniversary uh, as for everyone to know. That this is did. our anniversary week. Right? <coughs> this we, is our anniversary Joe, right, week. Joe has his birthday. Most people have a birthday, Joe. Well, actually, because it's in December and our Lord and Savior was, you know, we celebrate in the same month as Joe. Something Joe to be said right? for that. <laughs> so, Joe at least has a birthday week, but most of the time it's his birthday month. And yeah. so... That's why I guess now we're having an anniversary week. And if it was earlier, if it was like in January, it would be a birthday year. <laughs> but because it's in December, it's right at the end. So it's, so it's at least a month. Birthday yeah. month. Birthday so, month and I, anniversary week. and, and uh, so there, well, I, well, you know, now that it's Wednesday, it's halfway, I guess, gone away from the week. I'm not sure why we're talking about it. But I guess there's probably more presents to come since you're celebrating the whole. No, no that was it. Flowers in the candy. That was it. Uh, nice but, time. but I've got a lot more nice things to say to you oh, this well week. Then. I mean, well, those two or three things, that's not enough. <laughs> I've got about two or three more nice things I'm going to say before this week is up. That's right. So, Make it those 34 years. Write them down and you'll have six things. <laughs> I have six things. Um, okay. We've got a great show we today. Do. This is a wonderful, uh, Wednesday show. We've got, of course, back by popular demand. <laughs> Ron Moore, <laughs> a popular demand. Ron, are you coming this week? Dude. Yeah, Ron's going to be here. Yes, he is. And we've got some, he's the one with the history. I just yeah. gave you that one little tidbit. <laughs> he's got area history, Bradley County area historian, so he'll tell us some history. Ron Moore is here. Also, we have Arnold Botts will be mm -hmm. joining us, who, Arnold Botts, folks may not remember, but Arnold Botts, many, many years ago, was our police chief and did a wonderful job. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Mitchell Lyle was our police commissioner back then, and, and Arnold uh, was, of course, chief and, and did wonderfully as police chief. And he now is in the private sector doing private investigative work. And he works for Logan Thompson, mm -hmm. which is the law firm here in town, the law mm -hmm. firm. Uh, and he'll be talking to us a little about private investigation and how that works. Well, and about just, the, you know, with uh, a lot of with the accidents the, and right, that type the, of thing. The, the, the personal injury law that they do, how they actually go about you know, investigating those circumstances and how it happened and who was at fault and that type of thing. It's very interesting what it he is. does. And he's very, very meticulous, very, you know, detailed. You would have to be, I would be like, yeah, it happened around over there somewhere. Well, and, and that, needless I to was say, walking through it, you know, yeah, well, right? you know, and needless to say, I mean, his, uh, his credentials of law enforcement, like it would just, you can unfold it and let it roll right. down. So it's, so. He, he knows his stuff. So he's going to talk to us today. And then we also have Karen Bowles who has joined we us. We do. She is with the Compassionate Friends of Chad. Chattanooga. And this is something that you hope you never need, but it's something that is there that when a, a true crisis of lose, losing a child um, affects your life or someone that you know, um, that Karen is here to tell us about this organization, how it helped to lift her up with, through her own personal story. And um, there's nothing worse. We all, we all know that. There's nothing, there can be nothing worse, but life does go on. Um, and uh, there's just um, a method to, to get through that and to go one day at a time. And so Karen will be here to talk to us about her personal story and also about the, the compassionate friends um, and what they can help you um, or someone that you know to, uh, to go on. Yeah. And so, again, like I said, it's a great show today. It is Wednesday. We do thank you for joining us on Tennessee Valley this morning. We are going to take a commercial break, and we're going to be back with Karen. We are. Right after this. Stay tuned. Bradley County is home to a community of resilient, compassionate families who want the best for each other. 
the tragedies of the April 27, 2011 tornadoes brought our community together to bring aid to the hurting and helpless. It is time to come together once more. The Bradley County School System is underfunded and our future leaders are receiving their education in substandard learning environments. On August 2nd, you will have an opportunity to further impact our great community by voting for the wheel tax. A vote for the wheel tax will not only rebuild Blue Springs Elementary School, but it will provide a new facility that is engineered to meet the demands that technology places on the infrastructure. The overcrowded Walker Valley High School students and teachers will have much needed space and be able to use academic rooms for their intended purposes. The students and teachers of Lake Forest Middle School will no longer endure the hazardous conditions caused by the elements of nature and deteriorating classroom buildings. British philosopher Herbert Spencer stated, the great aim of education is not knowledge, but action. Would you take action in the name of education and vote yes for the wheel tax? A vote for the wheel tax is a vote for the children and the future of Bradley County. Hello, welcome back to Tennessee Valley this morning. Again, Joe and Kim Palo with you on this Wednesday, and we thank you for joining us. Tell your friends we're on the air, we're live till 7:30. We replay noon to one, so you right, can miss you it. Turn turn over, pull the covers up. Kim is the only off. one that would tell noon. you to stop watching and <laughs> no, to go back I'm to bed. I'm just saying, we'll be back. Come at on, noon. I'm just saying. Well, so if you don't have to be out of the bed, and you don't have to watch be out it. How about, about this? Watch us now and then watch us again at noon. Now, see, that's what Joe does with himself. He likes to watch himself. So there you go. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so thank you for be, uh, being with us today. Now we are joined by Karen Bowles. And Karen, we want to thank you so much for being with us as well this morning. And Kim, I want to let you tell a little bit about Karen, and then we're going to let Karen tell her story. All right. Karen is with the Compassionate Friends of Chattanooga, and this is an organization that you wish didn't have to exist, but it does, and it, and it exists for a very heartache um, reason. But at the same time, you know, there's heartache in, in, every, in life. Life is, we're not guaranteed, but the, the worst thing is losing a child. And you lost your, your son, Spencer, mm -hmm. um, and he was 21 years old. So tell us just a little bit about how you came to the Camp Compassionate Friends and where you're going from there and, you're, you know, your, your struggle one day at a time. Okay. Um, first of all, thank you so much for having me on the show. Sure. Um, this is a subject many people don't want to talk about, just plain and simple. They, sure. I, they, fear, they fear death, for one thing. But my son, uh, Spencer Alford, um, was killed in a car crash August 9th of 2009. It's coming on the three-year anniversary. And the morning when the doorbell rang, my life changed forever. Sure. And I have a daughter, uh, Lauren, who is now an only child. And that's something I never wanted, was an only child. So we have struggles with that as well. I went through a very, very dark period early on. I went through grief counseling. I tried pastoral counseling. None of these things were really a tremendous help to me. While well, they work for some people, those things just by themselves work. It wasn't working for me. And so I learned that there was a compassionate friends group in Chattanooga. And this is part of the largest self-help bereavement organization in the world. Okay. And we're part of the Compassionate Friends uh, USA. 
And through this, we have many programs designed to help help you walk through your grief sure. and to celebrate your child. One of the things that happens is people quit talking about your sure. child and and everyone else, you know, even a month after your child dies, even your extended family, everybody goes back to their normal life. Right. Your calendar is worthless right? because you've lost your future with that child and the things, the dreams that you had for that child, the dreams you had that you were going to do together. So this group has helped me tremendously. Everyone there is basically in the same boat. We're either a bereaved parent, a bereaved sibling, or a bereaved grandparent. Right. And of course, the thing with bereaved grandparents is they've got a double dose of grief because right. they're grieving for their grandchild and they're grieving for their, their child, child and the pain that their own child is going through. Sure. So that's kind of how I came to, came, came to be with the Compassionate Friends. And so <clears throat> there are lots of grief, grief support groups out there, but this one is particularly for parents, siblings, or grandparents that ha there's been a child that has been off that, that you know, affects the life of a parent, grandparent, or a sibling. That's so right. So this is what the Compassionate Friends in their chapter is in Chattanooga, but you're looking at moving and trying to, to get a support group here in, in Cleveland, right? For well, we actually not moving, not moving Kim. Not right. a group here. Uh, what we're doing is we are, we saw the need because of course Cleveland, if you read the Cleveland Daily Banner, it's almost like we lose a child a week. Uh, if you look at the obituaries at all. And this group has just been devastated over the last three years, this area, um, with deaths of children um, by various means. And so we decided that we would try an outreach program because there, there weren't any <coughs> folks stepping up from the Cleveland-Bradley County area to start their own chapter. Sure. The same thing is true in the Jasper and South Pittsburgh area. So we are going to, in addition to our regular monthly meetings, which we hold the second Sunday of every month at First Centenary Church in downtown Chattanooga, right. in addition to those meetings, starting on July 17th, we are going to have meetings every other month, an additional okay. meeting in Cleveland and in Jasper, both on the same night. That will offer folks in this area and even Polk and McMahon counties an opportunity to have a support group and they can also, that way they're part of our, you know, the parent chapter in Chattanooga and they will benefit from all the services that we offer and we have a special candle lighting service in December to celebrate the children, that sort of thing. I went on your webpage today, mm -hmm. on the webpage you told me to take a look at it and there are so many, I saw the, the balloons being set free at Mother's Day. I know mm -hmm. Mother's Day had to be extremely mm -hmm. tough for you at this time of year, but at the same time, I think that a lot of, of what we see are with families, and I've seen it over, that the siblings really suffer a lot too because where that could be a great day with you and your daughter, it's still so marked, you know, because right. of the death of your son. So not only does it affect you and your happiness, but your daughter's as well. You know, it puts that damper on her holiday, and it's really kind of neat how you guys get together and celebrate that life and then let the balloons go and then just kind of... Right. <laughs> Tomorrow's right. another day. Right. Monday's another right. day. That's right. right. Work through it. And one of the things with siblings, and that's really we're hoping to get a specific siblings group started with our chapter. One of the things with siblings is they are the forgotten mourners. Right. Um, for instance, when Spencer died, all these cards started coming to the house. They were all addressed to me right. or me and my husband, but Lauren was left off the cards. My husband fortunately got on the internet right. and popped out emails to certain groups of friends that we have please include Lauren because she's devastated, devastated. and so you know people people kind of became aware that oh yeah wait a minute mm -hmm. and another thing that happens frequently with siblings is everyone asks them how's your mom and dad, dad right they don't stop and ask them how are you doing and really mean it right you know right. And they put them in a position of being a support for that parent, and that's that's just terrible. Right, because most times, what happens? I know, as me being a mother, my heart would go to you, you know, and, mm -hmm. and Joe as a dad, his heart would go right. to your husband in a sense. And so, unless it was, you know, when I would to, were to see your daughter, what you know, that would be my first inclination, you know, n not realizing. But there is that grief, and then there's that sense of loneliness to where not only are they grieving. 
but they're pushed, you know, that nobody really sees them anymore. Nobody looks them, you know, because mm -hmm. it's, it, there's so much other grief going on that their life kind of kind of stops. And so it's real. I, I think that that would be a wonderful program for a sibling to be involved in to where they can kind of regain some of their sense of self and not just through, you know, their deceased right. sibling or their suffering parents. That's themselves. right. That is right. And the siblings... They, d they just have a totally different um, outlook on life after they lose sure. their sure. sibling. And, you know, s unfortunately, the statistics are really not good for siblings who lose a another sibling um, from the ages of 18 to 25. That is not a good age group because frequently those uh, surviving, I lose that, use that word loosely, surviving, those surviving siblings turn to alcohol and drugs sure. as a source coping. of comfort and, and coping. Uh, well, one other thing I was thinking about as you're talking about that, Karen, I can imagine probably, uh, and you said it's, it's Lauren, mm -hmm. that they probably also feel this tremendous um, sense of, of almost guilt that they're here their 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 brother their sister is gone and they're still here whether they were involved or not just the fact to think you know they're gone and and now and and knowing that you're going through the grieving process your husband and yourself and there may be like it's not like what about me but it's almost but it is like, what about but it me. is a little sure, bit but like they can well, never is. say that again you know right they know right. they can never say well what about me again because right, it's right, like right. oh you know so this big huge thing has happened that i should never ever be right. so selfish again when right. they should be able to be selfish that's again. right that's right and one of the things that happens and i appreciate you bringing that up ron one of the things that happens as well the guilt is also they start reliving every argument they ever right, had with their right. sibling. And let's face it, if you are human and you were in a human relationship, particularly siblings, if you've had sure. been fortunate sure. enough to have a sibling, you know that there have been arguments throughout the life. There have been a little tit for tat, you know, sure. and picking on each other. And so one of the things a friend told me early on, she said, be sure that you don't forget that you all are human right and that you all would have made mistakes or occasionally said something you didn't mean sure. and she directed that particularly at lauren because she said you know no relationship's perfect and right. everyone says things every now and then so don't beat yourself up too badly for right. that right. and and that's really it's a difficult thing to do sure well you know and i, I and when I got when we started communicating, first of all, I could never even begin to imagine. Or you know, I know what people say. So I know how you feel. I, yeah. No, I mean, the the grief has to be incredible. But it is so great that there's a program out there. Now I also read that. It, for these meetings that you're going to start having in Cleveland and still for the ones in Chattanooga that anybody wanted to be a part of, right. there's no reservation, there's no. no requirement, there's no dress code, there's no, no you, I've got to talk, I've got to fill mm. out paperwork. No, this no. is, and there's no time. There's no, you know, oh, it's good if you come within six weeks or, you know, grief is oh, personal, no. just like your tragedy is personal right. and it's how you deal with it. So talk a little bit about, you know, how you felt and what, you know, kind of got you to that point and that there is no standard. Don't get me wrong, folks. There is no standard, no, no. but that you can kind of know when you're ready to maybe talk about it a little bit. Well, I was, ever? it was six months before I even went to the first meeting and my husband kind of laughs at this story but he drove me and we got to you know it's 30 miles we get down to first centenary we pull in the parking lot and he says well we're here and i said i'm not getting out <laughs> and he said but don't you think you need this and i said no and that was part also of my denial Did because i kept thinking if i deny this long enough it really didn't happen sure. And you, you really do that, especially during the first year or so. You just kind of keep trying to put it on the back burner because it really, this is not real. And so he just kept, you know, gently encouraging me. And he said, well, why? He said, you don't have to say a word when you go in there. And which is right. And I didn't. That I mean, you wouldn't sure. believe that now. <laughs> but but I, I didn't. Um, I sat and listened. And we encouraged folks, you know, come, sit and listen. You may get absolutely nothing out of it. Right. It may be the best thing that ever happened to you. 
and which in my case I believe it was because I've met so many wonderful people. There are people there who have lost children due to every cause at every age. Right. We have people who've lost 50 year olds, people who have lost newborns mm -hmm. or stillborns sure. and the gamut in between. So it's, you know, there's, and there's no ethnic barrier. We have all ethnicities, um, all socioeconomic background. You're talking about clothes, you know, if you can get dressed and make <laughs> it there, that. and I'm serious, Absolutely. if you can, if you're able to get up, get dressed and make it there, that's a really good thing. And you're having a pretty good day, especially early on. Sure. And we encourage you to just to give it a try. We have found, you know, many people just aren't up for support groups and that's okay. But mm -hmm. one of the things that we do have, which is a good resource for any bereaved parent, grandparent or sibling is our website. Yes, and, that's, and it's a beautiful website. Thank I mean, you. Check that out, guys. What's the address for that? It's www.compassionatefriendswiththeschattanooga.org. And if you'll go to the links and resources page, you'll find many helpful resources. You simply click on there and you're right to the site. There's everything there from parents of murdered children, people who have lost uh, children, uh, siblings or grandchildren in air disasters, um, military, all of those types of events there. It, and, and again, as Karen was saying, that some people just aren't, you know, they're not cut out for counseling or group sessions in a sense or, or that mm -hmm. type of thing. That's okay. But you don't know that you're not. You know, you always say, I, you know, I don't want to go and sit with a bunch of people and hear about their, mm -hmm. you know, problems. I got enough of my problems mm -hmm. alone. You know, you want right. to do that. But sometimes it's very, very cleansing and very, mm -hmm. very cathartic, mm -hmm. you know, for, for something to be able to sit in that and to see that somebody else really does know your pain. You right. Know, that it's not yours alone to carry that you do get right. to have someone. One of the things I want to point out is that our programs aren't just sitting and, you know, boohooing and everything all sure, the time. Sure, no, not at we all. We have many really beneficial programs. We have guest speakers who come in. We do, we've done many art therapy type workshops. One uh, meeting we made memory bracelets, ceiling fan pulls, keychains. It was a great experience for everyone. We do some collage therapy. We'll do a journaling session sometime this year. Right. So different things, trying to find positive ways to help you process your grief. Now, is there a phone number, Karen, uh, if, as well as the website, if somebody wants to get in touch with you that's watching? Yes, uh, you would want to call 423-942-9206. Okay. And that is our chapter phone number. Okay. And we're very, very um, grateful that you are open to talk about the subject, and I know it's very hard for you, um, but also to bringing this and, and it's a ministry, whether or not it's religious or not. Mm -hmm, or, you know, right. we don't want to talk about that, but it is a ministry to the soul and to the heart of people. And that they're coming to Cleveland um, so that it'll be easier for people in the surrounding counties in Cleveland to get the support that they need. And so I encourage you to, to take a look at that website. Again, it's Compassionate, The Compassionate, or no, just, just, compassionate just Compassionate Friends Chattanooga. Friends. Chattanooga.org mm -hmm. and take a look. There's all kinds of links there, um, and I'm sure you've made some lifelong relationships and uh, and have had support when you needed it the most. And Certainly, so, uh, yeah, we're sorry for your loss, but so thankful that you Thank were you. here to, to talk to it about us and that you can uh, help somebody out there that that needs the help. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us today, Karen. Thanks. Okay, folks, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We've got uh, Ron Moore and, of course, Honor Botts is on the way as well as we continue Tennessee Valley this morning on this Wednesday. We'll be right back. At Crawford Pharmacy, we offer custom compounding. Our pharmacists are known for their attention to detail and unique expertise. So visit us at 2260 Chambliss Avenue, Cleveland, Tennessee. For personal assistance, walk right in or come up to our convenient drive through Crawford Pharmacy, serving our community one person at a time. Have annoying biting and stinging insects taken over your yard? Volunteer Rid of Pest can get it back. Make your yard a no-fly zone with Mosquito Guard. Volunteer Rid of Pest will eliminate these annoying pests and you'll be able to work in your yard have a pool party, a cookout, allow your children to play outside or just sit outside and enjoy the evening. Volunteer Rid of Pest has developed an extremely effective treatment program that treats all shrubs, bushes, trees, 
and other foliage where mosquitoes and other biting stinging insects live and breed. This material will not harm your plants or trees and leaves no harmful residue. This treatment program is safe for use around children and pets, but the best part is it's 100% guaranteed. If you are not 100% satisfied, Volunteer Ritapest will retreat for free until you are satisfied or after 30 days will cancel their agreement and refund 100% of your money. Give Volunteer Ritapest a call for a free no obligation estimate. Phone 472-7736. I'm Wes Robbins with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. When it comes to employee benefits, we've got you covered. Call me today for the best service and best solutions to your group health and employee benefits needs. At Landmark Insurance Brokerage, we've got you covered. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, Tennessee Valley this morning on WTMB. It is Wednesday, Joe and Kim Palo with you. Thank you so much for joining us. We are now joined by Arnold Botts. And Arnold, thank you so much for being here with us today. It's good to be with you. Arnold, uh, Arnold and I go way back. We've known each other a very long time. Uh, <laughs> he's taking me to jail. Yeah, he's, he's taking me to jail. <laughs> he's giving Joe time. No. a good night's sleep. You want too. details? <laughs> <laughs> details coming up later. <laughs> uh, but no, of course, uh, Arnold Botts uh, has been around this area for, for many, many, many years. Formerly a police chief, Cleveland police chief, and, and did a wonderful job. And now working as a private investigator with Logan Thompson. I'm the investigator firm. for the law firm of Logan and Thompson. Sure. That's we, correct. Now, now let's... Let's talk about that in particular because we, we've talked about before we went on how exciting and, and uh, what I want to say, um, um, uh, just to talk about that kind of stuff. It's very uh, detailed, detailed sure. and it's something that you, people need to know how it works to even know that it works. Tell us about what you do on a daily basis and how if someone out there is in need uh, of the services, how they would go about getting in touch with you and, and what all you could do for them. That's a lot of questions. That, I know. A lot. Wow. Answer, answer with, the first one you first. You mostly work with, you know, a personal injury, right? Is that most of what you do or no? Quite a bit of that. Okay. Let, let me describe it this way. As a private investigator, our law firm is multifaceted, if you will. We handle criminal law. We handle personal injury, workman's comp. We handle divorce and custody. There's a role for an investigator in every portion of that that I just mentioned. Okay. In personal injury, uh, taking photographs of the accident scene, photographs of the injuries, finding and interviewing witnesses, uh, interviewing the officers, things of that nature as far as personal injury. Uh, criminal law is, is something, again, is a big part of our, our law firm. And finding out the facts, again, looking for witnesses, things of that nature are very important steps to be taken there. Of course, custody and, and divorce are, are issues that, that re, again, require some I want to talk to you after the show about a little bit of that. Oh, so, okay. although maybe not custody <laughs> yeah, issues. Right. Maybe not custody issues yeah, since they're, they're grown. But, yeah, they're you know, 20s, they're 20s and 30s. Right. <laughs> you can have custody, trust me. You can have them. I always have. But so you have a, a lot of different areas there at the firm that you that you work with, but you've got to be very, you know, specific in what you in what you do. And so uh, when you if you see Arnold coming to ask you a question, you better be ready to tell him the truth. That's right. We <laughs> want the truth. That's what we look for is the truth. That's what I was gonna say. The, sure. the, the the point to the whole bottom the bottom line is getting to the truth, whatever that may be. And so in your case, and I do want to ask you this because we talked about this. Sure. Okay, spending all the years you did mm -hmm. putting people behind bars in sure. jail, mm -hmm. how is it different now in your new uh, career trying to keep people out of jail <laughs> and from having to go to jail? How does that work? Well, I don't like to describe it that way. Okay, all right. Thank you, Joe. But, but I have been asked that question many times. Yes. For years you put people in jail, now you try to keep them out. Well, the job is still the same. As an investigator, you're looking for the truth. You're looking for facts. You're looking for uh, to make sure that the rights of the individuals are res are respected and honored, and then you put it before a jury and let them make their decision. So, as a uh, prosecuting investigator, if you will, or defense investigator, you're still looking for those facts in a case. Whatever is going to whatever is going to help bring out the truth. Obviously. Exactly. The, the the truth is what you're really looking yeah. for. And, and the truth can be defined, and so I mean, is what well, your truth may not be my truth, and my truth may not be your truth, and it's perception a lot of time, and so you have to get rid of the perception and to really kind of, especially in, in fact, personal man, injury. In a sure, sense. you can. You have to work through personal feelings. Uh, for instance, 
eyewitness testimony. They say the least most reliable evidence in a case is eyewitness testimony because so many people see things in different ways. Right. So you really have to work through that to find what you would say is the facts or the truth. I went to, I told Joe a million times, we've talked about it, but I worked for a group home for the mentally retarded and we had to go to investigative training for an incident if there was an abuse or neglect claim. Mm -hmm. And so we had to go to training about that and when there was an incident that happened that they, they staged, but we didn't know exactly. it. And we all had to do the personal, the eyewitness thing. Sure. Well, someone in the room saw an older lady get up and move from the table over there to over there was me. I was the older lady. I've been mad ever since. <laughs> the truth hurts. The truth hurts. Like that was the truth. Ago, though. And I'm still, every day I yeah. think the older lady got up from that table. <laughs> older than what though? So, you know. Well, that's I was. True. I that's was true. the younger exactly. one in the group. I mean, the older one in the group. And so, yeah, yeah. it was, it killed me, but the truth is the truth, I guess. <laughs> Again, it's in perception. Yes, and, there uh, you go. You know, it, it, as an investigator, as a law firm, you, people, my friends will sometimes give me that, that parting uh, just stay out of trouble or when I see them are you in trouble and my answer is always I'm always in trouble <laughs> because my job revolves around the troubles of other individuals uh, I tell people that we solve the world's problems in our law firm right. they say, oh you don't do that well yes we do when when someone walks through the door and they've just uh, lost a spouse in a car accident sure. or a child has gone uh, aside in some right. way uh, they have the world's problems on their shoulders Mm -hmm. So we handle those problems for them. Mm -hmm. Sure. And that's what, you know, and I think that, that that's a lot of times the perception out there. You know, you're worried about an attorney, but they are your absolute best friend when when your world is rocked like that. When someone, when I know Joe was in an, auto, um, an accident that he was T-boned and decided, and I mean, in our world was very shaken. And we had an attorney, you know, that that, was, that sure. person was there to, to walk you through and to show you, you know, it can be better. He, he still has a neck. A little bit of that. <laughs> But yeah. still, I mean, you know, when you need someone there, you to know, work, to right or walk wrong. you through that valley, mm -hmm. then that's what we do at the law firm. Right. Well, another thing uh, I was going to ask you, I, I guess it's hard too when you're when you're investigating a particular um, incident or, or case or whatever it may be, not to have to take that stuff home. I mean, it, it, it's got to play. I mean, you're human, so some True. of the things you hear, some of the things you find out, have got to rock you a little bit sometimes. And you and how do you separate? what you're doing professionally at work to, and then when you're coming home. Well, that's one thing that my law enforcement career has prepared me for. Uh, I used to say, and I still say, um, I never will, will take the position I've seen everything because there's something else coming down the road that I'll say, wow. And you see that daily in some form or fashion. Uh, you just understand that, that uh, it's part of the job. People have problems, and you're there to try to help them walk through them. But when you leave and go home, then you're home. And you're right. with your family, your grandchildren, your whatever. And so you leave it, you, you sort of leave it at the office. Right. Yeah, I guess that would, that would probably obviously have gotten you ready for that, prepared and being law sure. enforcement. But I've always thought that about being a police officer. I mean, how do you not take that home? Especially when you, you see watch law and order. well, you especially when you see that. some of the things that you have to see and, and and hear and all the rest, and then you go home, and then it's got to it's got to kind of remind you, especially if you have kids, yeah. if you've got grandkids, whatever the case may be, that kind of triggers it. But um, better you than me, because I would take it home. I, I, I just you know I <laughs> would take it home. What can we ask you? What's one of the most interesting thing? You don't have to name names or anything, but can't what's name been names. No, you can't name I have names. Have to shoot you if I name names. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I've been shot like three times today already. Okay, all right. <laughs> but what's you one know, of the most the, interesting <laughs> things that you <laughs> have, have done and that you maybe were surprised at? You know, uh, really. <laughs> You're not being surprised. Not really surprised at a lot of things. It uh, had a case that was interesting in that uh, uh, to recover a dog. Yeah, uh, a couple had uh, had basically miscommunicated about whether or not they should keep a dog, and one party gave the dog away, and the other party said, "Where's my dog?" <laughs> and that <laughs> dog. <laughs> so I was retained to re find that dog, which had been placed in another home, and negotiate the return of that dog. But wow. it was a, it was really a very glorious reunion. Feel good situation. Exactly, in brought the end. that dog home, and, and everybody was happy, and so. I've been asked to find uh, relatives that have separated from each other over the years. I always enjoy 
bringing people back together oh, yeah, that that would be in that regard. And of course, there's, there's always the, uh, the car accident that you can't really figure out why this accident occurred or uh, crimes of passion, crimes of violence that uh, you, just, you just wonder why. You know? right. sure. Exactly, exactly. And I guess when you go to investigate, Sometimes the clues just just seem to all just come together instantly and they're like laid in your hands. And there's other times where you're actually scratching and, and grinding to find the smallest little thing. See, I always thought that with a traffic accident, when the accident's done and if there is no witness and the accident has occurred and the cars are taken and then you're there with your little thing marking mm -hmm. and measuring, sure. how can you determine what happened from that when nobody said, look, this guy crossed this line? I mean... I know Physics, you have, my man. <laughs> and I know there's a lot of things, you, formulas you go through, but, but are there some that just totally baffle you? There, there are some that, that does occur, but as a good investigator, you realize that there's, you have resources. Okay. And there are engineers, there are traffic rec accident reconstructionists who, using formulas, if you will, can tell you how fast the car was going or uh, how far it traveled after the, after the impact, things of that nature. Uh, so most accidents, many of them can, can be uh, understood as yeah. to the, the occurrence and the causation, if you will. But there are those that you just, how did this happen? Right. There's still some of those. Right. It's like when uh, if a car crashes and there's nobody there to see it or hear it, did it really crash? Right. <laughs> did it make a noise? We're getting the tree thing, aren't we? <laughs> right. <that's it. laughs> Well, but yeah, it happened. <laughs> but I, and I've always found that interesting because I know, like I said, there's there's a lot to gather, a lot of information to gather, whether sure. it be from the witnesses or from the scene itself. And uh, where that hit me, uh, and may he rest in peace, um, uh, our, our police officer Justin Maples that sure. passed. Uh, I noticed the Highway Patrol there doing the investigation. I kind of watched him a little bit, and they were very meticulous and sure. precise in how they were doing it and the measuring and what they were doing, and they were here and they were kind of gathering their information talking here and then moving over here and there were so many different areas they were doing at one time and that made me think that i thought you know to to reconstruct it in their heads or how they perceived it happen and you kind of know how it happened but to really this is exactly went down and 99 probably 0.9 percent of the time they're exactly right exactly how it occurred mm -hmm. just by the formulas or whatever if you will sure. like you said, that they put together so now this is kind of ballpark. In an average accident, how how much investigative uh, information? How long does it take? How many hours do really? you get into it? It really just depends on the the, the uh, severity of the accident. Uh, also, um, there's some accidents that are very obvious. One thing that many people don't understand: the, the vehicle itself will provide a lot of information. You have a computer chip in your vehicle that when the airbag. Uh, uh, goes off and things of that nature that can tell you the speed, uh, whether or not the brakes were applied, and so there's there's information to be gained from the vehicle itself right, right. that can tell you a lot. Uh, the drivers themselves, obviously, you want statements there, and you're gonna you're usually gonna get two different uh, uh, versions <laughs> right. of how it happened. Right, right. Now, if someone watching Arnold uh, has been involved in an accident or uh, has an, a situation where they they need. A, an excellent law firm or an excellent investigator to come help them with their case. Phone number and times, uh, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Well, the law firm number is 476-2251. Uh, my cell phone is, is um, published. It's 595-2692. Okay. Uh, so we're available to assist in, in those matters. Well, and that's what's really great about, I mean, Arnold, you have got a great history of law enforcement. I mean, you were where, I mean, where you at today is because of where you were before. And so that really makes you a real asset to Thompson Logan or Logan Thompson. And they are known as the premier, I mean, the, the, the firm in town and, uh, you know. Southeast. Uh, right, Southeast. in the Southeast Tennessee. And so you should be very proud uh, that your expertise, I mean, has helped so much with that firm. I know that I tell uh, everybody all the time if something happens to Joe that <laughs> I know a good lawyer and well, so I know thing, a good investigator. But the thing is, <laughs> we'll you've see already. If I can't send she you keeps on that saying that. I know what I'm saying. She's already putting all that out there. It's on tape. It's all <laughs> over the internet now. Say, oh, if I'm in it, I 
I wouldn't have right. said well. it. It's all <laughs> like a plan, but no. I mean, uh, no. I mean, it, it really. I, I would feel very comfortable knowing that that I had you investigating if we had well, something um, that had happened in our lives and that we we needed representation. Right. That I, I think then to feel comfortable with you too, as far as to trust is to very important. Truth. Right. Yeah. That's what I think. So I mean, you, you're a yeah. guy that has got your you know um, reputation with you, and that you know we can just tell you just about anything, and, and well, you'll thank you. You'll understand yeah. it and treat us with And, with and a point you just made, you said that he should be proud to work with Logan Thompson, but Logan yeah. Thompson well, should be what proud I mean. to have him That's what I mean, that they should, with be, them as they well. should be proud to have <laughs> I just, we're, we're a law firm that, uh, again, handles many different types sure. of cases, and there's, there's resources and, and experience and training involved in, in every part of that, and we have that to offer. So again, folks, if you're, uh, uh, if you're in need of, of Arnold or any of the services they offer at Logan Thompson, again, it's 476-2251 or your cell number? 595-2692. Okay. Arnold, thank you for being with us, man. And we I'll hope find, to have you back yeah, again. Have, thank you yeah. very much. We'll talk some we'll more talk interesting about specific tidbits. Things. Right. That's right. How to kill your husband. <laughs> right. Without trying. Without trying. Without right. really it's trying. An accident. Is she off her medication? Uh, no, no, no. She's got to go back on it. She's got to go back right. on it. If I don't get him, he's going to get me on it. Oh, yeah. Know One, sooner or later. But, <laughs> I, I'm, right. but see, my mouth is, I'm zipping it. <laughs> so if it happens, who knows who did it? In any case, we've got, uh, we've got Ron Morris setting, uh, standing in the wings, going to be on here in just a few. We're going to talk about some Bradley County history. When we come back with more of Tennessee Valley this morning, stay tuned. Pharmacy, we offer custom compounding. Our pharmacists are known for their attention to detail and unique expertise. So visit us at 2260 Chambliss Avenue, Cleveland, Tennessee. For personal assistance, walk right in or come up to our convenient drive through Crawford Pharmacy, serving our community one person at a time. Hello and welcome back, Tennessee Valley this morning. Kim, you never, you never are ready. You never are ready. Joe, I was so, I ready. was listening you're, to Ron. Ron was yeah, telling well, a you're, really good you're story. You're lucky Arnold just walked out. <laughs> I, would, I would tell you stories on Arnold. Oh, see? But I was there too. And I, yeah, yeah, so, not right. Yeah, 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 so, you can't tell it. There's all good stuff. It's only good and, stuff. And I, I have to mention Arnold's married to the former Vicki Moore. Okay. We're not related, but oh. we pretended to be brother and sister all the way through high school. See? So, oh. but, uh, okay. so, but Vicky's a great, that's the great part that's of that. That's the great part of Arnold. Yeah. Yeah. I understand yeah. it being yeah. the great part yeah. of Vicky and, and her, Eric and Andy, and their, their boys you, are, are great you guys, Vicky too. I bet not one time has ever mentioned taking Arnold out like she does me. I bet not one time has she not ever well, she mentioned. she did call me once. <laughs> well, yeah, but that was, that, yeah, yeah. that was a long time ago. I've never there called anybody, See, though. This is a bad lead-in for my story me. today. Yeah, this is. Well, let's well, first introduce We're talking about the gospel today. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, well. We, we digress, <laughs> but we're going to We're, we're gonna not going to be laying our hands on nobody. because <laughs> We're going to bring it back around. But we're real quick, let's introduce. We are joined now by Ron Moore, a uh, Braddock County historian that's with us every Wednesday. Almost. Uh, well, almost, almost every Wednesday. I, I've had uh, the last couple of weeks. Of, I've but had you were to, preparing for this week is why. Yes. You yes, were getting the information yes, again. Yeah, and I've done a good, I had two weeks to get ready for this. Week. Yeah. So I did, it's a, it's a I did have uh, Doug Mizell come in and sit in for me one yes, day. And and Doug great, 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 great interest. Yes, he was so, very interesting. Well, you know, America basically was formed because the taxation in England and and uh, you couldn't worship the way you want to. So the religion was a big part of coming to America. 
uh, still, you know, the Protestants and the Catholics still fight here and, you know, so, but a lot of the Irish come down this way. And the Methodist church was large in this area. Yes. So early in, uh, Tennessee had been a state about 50 years before Bradley County was formed because this was the Cherokee Nation. It wasn't actually part of Tennessee. It, the border was there, but we had no control over it. So uh, early we started getting settlers coming in here and living among the, uh, the Cherokee and they uh, started bringing their religion in, trying to convert everybody. And the Methodist was one of some of the first people coming. You know, in 1836, uh, they came to Bradley County and organized the Newton District or a uh, conference, and now it's, co of course, the Holston Conference, this area. And that's the start of the Methodist Church here. And we had s several little missions around that were Methodist. But the key thing that we had, uh, and I read it, uh, somewhere it said in 1837, it was a red-letter day for the pulpit marking the beginning of the Cumberland Presbyterian Church, the Presbyterian Church, and the Methodists in a young county. So, oh, so we're here, we're getting that religion here. And so, but the biggest way that Methodists got around was called circuit riding. Right. And that's, they had a pastor who was assigned certain areas and he got on his horse and he rode. rode. When it was wet and when it was cold, when it was dry, when the horse was cranky, he still had to go. And he had certain places to stop. He may be preaching in a barn one day or out in the field or a, in a brush harbor. You know, what, you know what a brush harbor is? Basically, it's a lean-to. They go, go get the logs and, uh, and they stand them up and they just make a hut out of it. And some of these huts got to be 20, 30 feet wide, 100 feet long. Wow. Well, there you go. Yeah, so, and they, uh, the good thing about it, they were open on the side, so if you crowded inside, you sit on a stump around it where they cut the trees down. Okay. So, or if the preacher started stepping on your toes right. in his sermon, you could kind of move to the side. Yeah. To the, the, back. You know, the preachers used to be a lot of time were school teachers too. That was a good occupation for them. But they spent many, many hours riding on there, and that was that was the Methodist form of uh, the gospel at that time. And uh, but there were hundreds of people claimed to be ministers in Bradley County and, and all over, but they weren't organized or recognized by a church. But they still held weddings and huh. done funerals and prayed on people and stuff of that nature. Uh, but the conferences, like the Methodist conference. You mean prayed as P-R-A-Y, not uh, P-R-E-Y. Yeah, well, <laughs> they, they were probably some, even go there. There probably some shysters there that well, all needed yeah. to yeah, investigate. I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, uh, one, of the, one of those guys uh, was uh, Reverend R.N. Price down at Price Chapel down on the South End. And he led services both for the Cherokee and for the whites. Okay. So, let's like say we were trying to convert them into our religion. You know, instead of, we didn't join them, we tried to get them to join us. You know, we, right. as a matter of fact, in the Cherokee, started dressing like us, started farming like us, uh, actually took on some of our habits of owning slaves. As a matter of fact, they were the biggest slave owners in the area. So, uh, so each year after the crops were done, they had camp meetings. Now, you've probably heard of growing sure, up as camp meetings. Meeting. And back then it was literally, they would come to a brush harbor or they, as they got fancier, would build some sheds and they would spend two or three weeks, even if you lived down the street, you would come camp there sure. and you have a big revival, what we would call them today. So they'd be, and there'd be four or five sermons a day in these camp meetings. And so, uh, like I say, the-, the <laughs> Joe, Joe could hardly wait to get there, could you, honey? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so now you may have been to a camp meeting or a, for a day <laughs> I am. I, that's right. We, we, that's right. We spent you a week at a camp meeting one weekend. Two or three weeks sitting on a log. <laughs> I listen to service every day. I mean, so uh, yeah. <laughs> camp meetings are still popular. Or they, they were, but they're not as pop. It's a thing probably gone in the past. Uh, the biggest one here was at McC uh, Caslin Springs up on Lane Gap, which is between the big uh, Chattata and Little Chattata Valleys. Okay. Okay. And there's a lot of the, that's what happened is, I'll tell you here in a minute if I get my page to turn, <laughs> uh, McFerrin was his name. He came down here riding on his circuit and he found, he was riding the Indian trails because mm -hmm. we didn't have roads, or, right. you know, and there wasn't any cell phones or anything saying, hey, we're coming, you know, yes. we just, you come riding down through there. Uh, this, this camp meeting was uh, mentioned as early as December 1835 in the Tennessee State Legislature mm -hmm. records. So John B. McFerrin traveled those trails and he came up and he found uh, Harmon McCaslin at the spring. That's why it's called Caslin's Caslin Makes Springs. Sense. Makes sense. <laughs> he liked the area. So he asked if he could hold one of those Brush Arbor meetings there and they uh, had a, it was a white settlement there. 
So with the help of the McMillans, the Eldridge, and the Bates, they built a brush arbor, and three weeks later, they started the church. So apparently this was the start, and this is what the circuit preacher was trying to do, was start another church. Now, apparently he stayed and liked this area. So, uh, of course, Bradley County was, uh, the reason that Bradley County did so well was several things. We had the river for traffic. Oh. Uh, we did have some roads, uh, thanks to the, although they were primitive by the Indians, uh, that uh, we started getting the railroad, uh, we had the copper mine starting, and we had water. We have more springs in this area than probably in, uh, uh, a lot of places in Tennessee. There's a spring just all over downtown Cleveland. There's springs capped all over that area. So this is a good place. Uh, so for, built, for starting the church, uh, Mrs. McMillan, uh, she made him a homemade suit and two pairs of wool socks. Well, I thought that was special. Well, you know, it was right afterwards they did that show, with McMillan and Wife. McMillan and Wife, right. Uh, and some of the, the other places that we had camp meetings that were are sort of noted here were at Red Hill, Chilcut, first known as Dunn's Place, and then Lee's, Price's, Eldridge, and Red Clay. Now, Eldridge Campground, there's still a little cemetery there. You, it's hard to find now uh, because it's built up around it. Uh, it's right on North Lee Highway called Anatole. Ah. Uh, if you go through the middle of Anatole, right in the middle of all those big houses, the Eldridge, uh, that was the old Eldridge place and where Get they had... Get out of here. Had, Is there still a little cemetery? Yes, sir. Right in the middle of that area back there. And you have to really know where you're going to find it. But there's just a handful of graves still right in the middle of Anatole. Hmm. Uh, and uh, there's a little little space you go and... Uh, Don't go scrounging around there and it's all looking yeah, for yeah. But, uh, but that was a big that was a big campground there. That's where they, they met. Hmm. And so uh, the Charleston Methodists had the record of church meeting in their books as early as 1825. Wow. wow. So like I say, we tried to convert to Cherokee <laughs> and uh, then we just run them off. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, which wasn't we just, very, it wasn't fun we for didn't them. We run them off. We, we, uh, well, we, we pretty we, much run them off. We, <laughs> we uh, forced we, them off. Yeah. We, we, uh, well, so, uh, so really uh, what we're talking about is at the very beginning, it was the Methodist and the Presbyterian here. Right, and the Cumberland Presbyterian. There's a difference there. Oh, okay. I don't know what. You know, the Church of God didn't come along until about 1900s, really. Right, you know, right. uh, Ambrosia, Jessup, uh, Thompson. Thompson uh, when did the Catholics come? About yeah. years the, the, ago. They were Roman Catholics here, but it, it, this area was more predominantly, uh, although you would think the Irish would have been more Roman Catholic, but they weren't. This, this apparently, apparently the Protestants. Protestant. The Protestants came over. were very big. And now, well, see, now the, that you've got the influx of a lot of ethnicity. You know, the Catholics were, and the Protestants never got along. And, well, never, no. still don't get along. If you go to Ireland, <laughs> the streets are painted, the curbs are painted orange or blue. I forget which color means which. <laughs> but you'll find out. But if you're the wrong color, color and you're going down there, so it's not a racial thing, it is religious. And which happens to be the colors of the University of Florida, right. orange <laughs> and blue. Yeah. So, exactly. what so, so what are you going to do? Uh, well, okay. Well, we thank you for bringing this uh, to our attention today because we and always often, enjoy you. You know, everybody would have thought that not the Methodists, it would have had to have been the Pentecostals, but the Pentecostals didn't even really get organized yeah. Yeah. or yeah. even have a, a yeah. movement. Well, you know, of course, and it's amazing that, you know, this area... It's still very, uh, was one of the pre predominant religious, and I don't know why, you know, but we came in and known, uh, and of course, the, the creation of the Church of God and the Church of God of Prophecy, right. which basically, the Church of God of Prophecy was, is a name ordered by the court system. It wasn't a church created called the Church of God of Prophecy. Right. A Bradley County court named the Church of God of Prophecy. Right. And, and, that, and, and, and thus, you know, now there's a whole book. Yeah, 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 that's, that's another, that's a show that's in itself. Show. It, it's a great story, though. I mean, it, it is a good story. Uh, it's, you know, there's some sadness to it and there's yeah. some history to it. And, of course, you know, I guess if you were in that, it may not be as pleasant as what I can no. talk about. No, right. no. I don't well, hopefully we'll, we'll talk about that down the road. We, we want to thank you for joining us again, Ron, as always. And we're so, so glad much. you're yes, back. Yes, I'm, I'm glad, glad to be back. <laughs> we, want to thank, we want to thank Ron, of course, on Bots, and we also want to thank Karen Bowles, who was with us Very earlier. Nice Have yourself a great middle of the week Wednesday. We'll see you next Wednesday on Tennessee Valley this morning. For Joe and Kim Palo, have yourself a good one.